सहनो भवतो सहनो भुनक्तो सह वीर्यम करवावह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुम विदिषावह ओ शाधिशाधिशाति दया करो शिव गंगाधारी दया करो शिव गंगाधारी कृपा करो शिव हे त्रिपुरारी कृपा करो शिव हे त्रिपुरारी दया करो शिव गंगाधारी नाम मधुर शुभ मंगलकारी नाम मधुर शुभ मंगलकारी अलख निरंजन त्रिशूलधारी अलख निरंजन त्रिशूलधारी दया करो कृपा करो रक्षा करो भोला भंडारी दया करो शिव गंगाधारी कृपा करो शिव हे त्रिपुरारी दया करो शिव गंगाधारी ओम नमो नारायणाय Yeah.
सदाशिवसरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतन पुनः समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर रिपीट वंस ओम नमो भगवते वैवस्वताय मृत्यवे ब्रह्म विद्याचार्याय नचिकेत से सॉर प्रोस्ट्रेशन टू द टीचर ऑफ दिस उपनिषद कठोपनिषद हु इज द टीचर यमराज यमधर्मराज एंड द स्टूडेंट Who is the student? Nachiketa is the student. That is the meaning of this. Om Namo Bhagavate Vaivasvata Yam Rityave. Son of Sun God Yamaraj. Who is the Brahma Vidya Acharya? Our prostration to that teacher, and also to that wonderful student Nachiketa. so now we are in the fifth valley okay so you may ask this question swami ji we don't we have not heard the previous valleys will it affect no it will not affect we are going to handle this section as an independent section okay in fact bhagwan shankaracharya ji when writing the introduction to this valley Bhagwan Shankar Acharya ji says the same thing what has been said is being said again but in a different way but the content is the same okay so now we are entering into the first verse of this fifth valli in the chinmaya mission book it is page number 231 so here is a description of where the lord resides that supreme lord where does he reside let us chant the first verse purame kadash dwaram ajasya vakra chetasah anushthaya na shochati विमुक्त विमुच्यते टुगेदर पुरमे कादश द्वारम अजस्या वक्रचेत अनुष्ठा न शोचति विमुक्त विमुच्यते यस दैट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड so how is that lord described here ajasya avakrachetasah two terms are used to describe the nature of that lord number 1 ajah ajah means unborn that lord who is unborn so here the description is the description of the consciousness in us that consciousness which is birthless avakrachetasah vakra means crooked 
So avakra means straight, not crooked. We will see all this meaning later. Chetas. Cheta. In this context, cheta means consciousness. That consciousness which is not crooked. That consciousness which is straight. That consciousness which is unborn. That consciousness resides somewhere. There is a house. Puram. Puram means residence. Puram means a city also. Mansion. This Lord resides in a mansion. And what is that mansion? This mansion, Puram, has got Ekadasha Dwaram. Dwaram means what? A hole or a gate. In this context, a gate. So, there is this city, there is this mansion with 11 gates. This Lord, this consciousness stays there. Anushthaya, the one who pays attention to it, does Anushthanam, performs this ritual. What happens to him? Nashochati. That person becomes free from all sorrows. Vimuktascha vimuchyati. He becomes liberated in this birth and becomes free from all birth-death cycle after the physical death. The liberated becomes liberated. That is the meaning of vimuktascha vimuchyati. The liberated becomes liberated. All those things we will see. So the first one, let us see this term. City of eleven gates. So what is the city of eleven gates? Nothing but our physical body. Puram. Idam sharirakhyam puram. Bhagavan Shankaracharya's commentary. What is this city? This body is that city. And what are this ekadasha dwaram of this body? Ekadasha dwarani asya sapta shirshnyani. There are seven gates on the head. Nabhyasaha arvanchi trini. Below there are three. Shirasi ekam. Above the head, one. Taihi ekadasha dwaram puram. So what are the eleven gates? On this head, two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth. How much? Seven. Okay. And one upon the head, crown. Eight. <coughs> Below, three. One is navel, one is anus, the other is genital so total how many 11 so this is that city of 11 gates in this city the lord resides ajasya avakra chetasaha puram now what are the factors which we can compare you know in a city if you see There are so many things happening in a city, isn't it? <laughs> in the same way, in this body also, so many things are happening. There is electric line, there is telephone line, internet line, water line, sewage line. So many lines are running here and there. Isn't it true that in this body also there are so many lines? So many nervous systems. Blood has to go. Signals have to go. Sensations have to go. The whole body is busy like any city. Lot of activity. And in any city, in any city, 
you will find that the city has to transact with the outer world so there are gates ports isn't it airport sea port transaction has to happen so many things have to come from outer world to the city so many things have to go from the city to the outer world gates are necessary in the same way this body also has got <laughs> these gates from the outer world so many things we take in from the body so many things we throw out so the gates are there also if you see a city is an assembly of so many things correct you can take puram a city or mansion in whichever the meaning both are acceptable it's an assembly hmm. school is there hospital is there roads are there everything put together is a city in the same way the physical body hands legs every limb put together is a is that body correct now the whole city functions based on certain laws laws are very important otherwise efficient functioning will not possible it's not possible in the same way in this body also there are so many laws if you violate the law what will happen there will be problem in the body <laughs> we things which are not good for your body then what will happen yes you will fall sick isn't it each city has got its own laws in the same way each body has got its own do's and don'ts there are people who are allergic to garlic some are allergic to drumstick some are allergic to tomato some are allergic to milk also varieties of body you have to understand the nature of the body there are laws now the most important point here is a city has got a ruler in the same way the body also has got a master a ruler and the most important thing this master is different from the city the body the one who is ruling the city is very different from the city it is not a part of the city yes or no in the city there are so many things but the ruler of the city is he a part of the assembly no he is something totally different the ruler is different from the city the city serves the purpose of the ruler in the same way this body is very different from the master master is not a assembly of this body a part or a limb is totally different and the body serves the purpose of its master so all those similarities you have to take when we are making a comparison the body is in sentient but the master is sentient you cannot have an inert master that master has to be sentient alive aware an insentient thing by itself cannot be a master पुरम एकादश द्वारम अजस्य अवक्रचेत सह सो दैट लॉर्ड इज रिसाइडिंग इन दिस बॉडी द होल पॉइंट इज दिस सो वे शुड अवर अटेंशन बी नाउ दैट लॉर्ड हु इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ द होल यूनिवर्स दैट विल कम लेटर हिज रेसिडेंस इज दिस बॉडी so if you want to meet a person where should you go 
we should go to that person's residence <laughs> isn't it so if i want to meet the lord where should i go you don't have to go anywhere <laughs> right here in the city of eleven gates which is already available you just have to pay attention you will find him right who is he so two terms are given here ajasya avakrajetasah ajah ajah means what unborn janmaadi vikriya rahitasya ajah means that entity which is unborn so unborn means what so bhagwan shankaracharya ji says all the six modifications we will have to take care i mean you have to keep in mind what are the six modifications asti jayate vardhate viparinamate apakshiyate vinashyati tatto bodha the six modifications of the body asti it exists in the womb jayate it is born from the womb vardhate it grows viparinamate it matures apakshiyate dikes vinashyati dies these are the six modifications of the body so when it is said ajah unborn we have to understand consciousness in us has no such modification janmaadi vikriya rahitasya this consciousness which is there in us which is a lord in us which is free from all this modification atman rajasthaniyasya this consciousness what is the role of this consciousness in this body atman rajasthaniyasya it is occupying the place of a raja raja means king you know what uh, what is the role of the king so in the court in the royal court king is there and all activities happen there does the king do anything no in his mere presence things happen in the same way this consciousness in us in his presence all activities are functioning this consciousness is like a raja the king in his presence things are happening none dare to disobey him <laughs> you know there is a law what is a law the more efficient the master is the lesser he need to do anything his mere presence is enough everything will happen that is the power of that master if you don't have power then you have to run around shout yell <laughs> and still things won't happen but when the master is powerful enough his presence is enough he need not do anything atman hai rajasthani is means that way consciousness is residing in this body what is his role he is not the part of body body has got six modification he is free from all these modification but he is present as a king and you will always find that the moment the king exits what happens all gone <laughs> that is the role he is playing everything is happening because of him without him nothing will happen atmanah rajasthaniyasya pura dharma vilakshanasya pura dharma what is a pura dharma asti jayate vardate etc that is they, they are the properties of the body so this king this consciousness he is staying there but his property is very much different from the property of that city vilakshana means viparita lakshana whatever the property you have for the body it is just the opposite body has birth consciousness has no birth body has death consciousness has no death body has decay etc disease consciousness is free that is called as vilakshana viparita lakshana so in this way 
that lord is residing in every one of us as the very consciousness in us as the very self in us the i the aham in its purest form is god i just say one more adjective is given what is the second adjective avakrachetasah avakrachetasah so chetas one meaning here is consciousness why is this consciousness called avakra you know what is vakrata <laughs> vakra buddhi and all this you know <laughs> vakra means crooked what is the crookedness in a person that person you know he behaves differently to different people in different situation that is called as vakrata you can't trust one time he says one thing another time he says something else that is called as vakrata inside there is something outside there is something else is that called vakrata what about consciousness avakra avakra means what it is the same all the time avakram akutilam aditya prakashavat nityam eva avasthitam aditya prakashavat like the sunlight constantly it is the same it is not like the diya in diya when the oil is there bright as the oil decreases <laughs> you see the comparison the sunlight is there all the time that light is nityam eva avasthitam ekarupam its brilliance is the same it is constant not changing no variation hmm. that is called as avakrata of consciousness avakrata also has got another meaning you see avakra means what not crooked not crooked means what straight straight means what you don't need anything to see it you don't need any medium to experience it to see a flower what do you need you need eyes you need the mind you know so many aspects are needed to no consciousness what do you need do you need eyes do you need ears nose etc no <laughs> even the blind deaf dumb can know it don't need anything that is called as a straight forwardness or the straightness of that thing you know avakrachetas now this chetas has got another meaning another meaning of the chetas is mind you know if you take chetas as mind avakra chetasa means what that which is known with a non crooked mind that meaning also is beautiful that which can be known only through a pure mind a mind which is free from kama krodha raga dvesha ahankara mamakara a mind which is rich in jnana bhakti vairagya a mind which is rich in samadhi shatka sampatti such a pure mind virtuous mind such a mind is called avakra chetas so what is consciousness consciousness is that which can be known only through such a pure mind 
అవక్రచేతస so where is this consciousness where can we experience it in the same body nowhere else you don't have to go anywhere purame ekadasha dwaram ajasya avakra chetasah what are we supposed to do to know this consciousness anushthaya if you pay attention to this consciousness na chochati all your sorrows will end what is this anushthanam so bhagwan shankaracharya ji beautifully writes a commentary for that anushthanam yasya idam puram tam parameshwaram puraswaminam anushthaya anushthaya means what dhyatva dhyatva means meditate but bhagwan what is this meditation dhyanam hi tasya anushthanam dhyanam here means paying attention see generally whenever we say talk of anushthanam we think of some ritual isn't it some homa havana you burn something do something generally that is the meaning of anushthanam here bhagwan says anushthanam means it is just dhyanam dhyana means what paying attention how to know consciousness just be conscious of consciousness <laughs> being conscious is called meditation being conscious means what paying attention to consciousness but when we pay attention to consciousness one more thing is very important what is that samyak vijnana purvakam with full understanding of what this consciousness is that is also important a great person may be there with you but if you don't know the greatness of that person you will consider him as any other person <laughs> isn't it next you may be seated a president or a prime minister of this country or whoever some great man but if you don't know the glory of that man you will just ignore him disregard him disrespect him and this is exactly what is happening in all of our lives the lord himself is there with all of us how is he as consciousness as awareness we are all experiencing that awareness we are all experiencing that consciousness but majority of the people they ignore consciousness why because they don't know the glory of this consciousness who is this consciousness bhagwan says yasya idam puram that consciousness is that to whom this body belongs tam parameshwaram puraswaminam he is a lord parameshwar the supreme ruler he is there with us but because we don't know what that is we ignore so what is anushthanam pay attention shift your attention it is there be aware of its presence recognize its presence there is no doing involved here it is just a kind of you know it's a very subtle thing <laughs> homa havana etc oh put this ghee that ghee put wood smoke is there eyes are burning so many mantras i have to chant oh 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 <laughs> vedantik anushthanam is a silent worship what is involved in this worship just pay attention that's it over hmm. 
no crying weeping nothing too much of activity nothing body may be motionless or motionful doesn't matter body may be active or inactive doesn't matter this meditation is just paying attention and what happens when you pay attention you experience his presence and what happens when you experience his presence na shochati all sorrows are gone are you able to understand what i am saying <laughs> you don't have to do anything it is all about paying attention but to pay attention what do you need you need an alert vigilant satvik mind otherwise paying attention also is a difficult thing a dull mind cannot pay attention an extroverted mind cannot pay attention paying attention this freedom is avail- available only for a pure mind and that is why in spirituality purification of mind is given great importance all sadhanas are for purification what is the sign of a pure mind alert vigilant fresh obedient inward looking free from all extrovertedness silent quiet mind and with such a mind what do you do shift that attention that's it and then what do you find you find the lord na shochati what is the result of a successful meditation sorrow vanishes what is the source of all sorrows you see i cannot stand any defeat any loss any degradation any decay of anything which is me or mine what did i say <laughs> very many were miserable after india's loss even now very many are struggling to come out what is the mistake we have done or rather what is the law law is this any defeat any degradation any loss any decay of anything which is me or mine will create sorrow so therefore what i have to do with this meditation what are you doing you are just paying attention right this meditation has to be understood when you are witnessing this puram ekadasha dwaram that's how this meditation begins you are just paying attention to your body first that's how it begins paying attention to consciousness is later but what is the whole process in this meditation you are just paying attention to everything which is you so when you are paying attention to this body silently you are educating the mind that anything that you witness is different from you observer is different from the observed there are 
two different things they are not one when the mind is paying attention to the body and the bodily functions that meditation will come later that is the initial stage of meditation just watch various functions various sensations in the body as you keep watching silently you are training the mind in a great truth of life what is it that which is watched is different from the watcher theoretical knowledge will not help drashta is different from drishya how to educate the mind in this go through that process what is the process where that separation viveka discrimination happens what is the process the process is watching the process is witnessing that's how you discriminate between two at present what is the mistake we have done the observer and the observed has become one i am not able to clearly differentiate between the two the observer and the observed it is appearing as one the observing consciousness and the observed body it has become one now what is the property of the body everything limited finite imperfect so when i am identified with an imperfect thing see the term identification what is identification becoming one that is called identification attachment identification they are all same thing only <laughs> becoming one the object has become a part of the subject that is called identification mind has that ability it can make any object a part of the subject this ability mind has got and once the object has become the subject the properties of the object start affecting the subject that is me so how to separate it how to separate the subject and the object witnessing is the way watch so anushthana means dhyanam paying attention so as you are paying attention to the object your attention is upon the subject just like that electricity i am seeing the bulb but where is my attention the seen bright bulb is taking my attention to unseen electricity in the same way the seen body is taking my attention to unseen consciousness this is how the whole process of witnessing you know is practiced so anushthana means dhyanam dhyanam means what samyak vijnana purvakam with a full knowledge of the glory of this consciousness this consciousness with which i am aware with which i am conscious this consciousness is the very support of the world how did i know through shravanam and mananam what am i doing now nididhyasanam shravanam means listening to the scriptures unless we listen to the scriptures we will never know the glory of consciousness we will just take it for granted shravanam is the way listen to the scriptures the scripture says tatvamasi that consciousness you are shift your attention then you do mananam reflection doubts are clear then the practice of nididhyasana that is what is anushthana so here anushthana means nididhyasana what is nididhyasana paying attention all the sorrows are gone all the sorrows come because of the identification with the imperfect with the finite with the limited 
with this dhyanam you separate yourself from everything finite everything limited everything imperfect then you come to know that all imperfections don't belong to me at all all these imperfections belong to the observed entity not the observer consciousness is finite or infinite how do you know <laughs> see let us assume consciousness is finite then what are you doing you are aware of finitude right now if you are aware of something that's a part of the subject or the object <laughs> object that means what that finitude is not of consciousness you got it so therefore we conclude consciousness is infinite there are various ways this is one way anything that you are witnessing anything that you are aware of that property belongs to that object and not the subject and the moment you separate yourself from everything finite property of that thing stops affecting you you identify with the body the sickness of the body is your sickness you keep the body away as an object of witnessing its sorrow is not yours the more efficient the witnessing the less the mind is affected by the limitation of that object this is the law so that is what is at nashochati all the imperfections belong to this puram ekadasha dwaram birth death sickness disease imperfection limitation nashochati sorrow goes away sorrow comes with identification sorrow ends with disidentification and the process of disidentification is observe witnessing hmm. now a beautiful term is used vimuktascha vimuchyate the liberated is liberated what is our condition now the scripture says you are already liberated you are not bound at all in the first place vimukta hai you are already vimukta hai bandhanam this bondage is only a notion in the mind so how to attain liberation if the bondage is born out of wrong notion how to attain liberation remove that wrong notion that's all and that is why paying attention is important wrong notions come because you have not paid attention to it pay attention all wrong notions will go suppose i am in the prison in the dream and i feel i am bound what is the reality vimuktah in the dream i feel that i am bound but actually am i bound no i am lying down comfortably on my bed in my dream i think that i am bound i am in the prison it is just a wrong notion of the mind so many such examples are given the lion was thought that it is a sheep how to attain back its lionliness <laughs> it is a wrong notion remove the wrong notion our famous rope snake example what is there there is only rope but in my mind there is a wrong notion that is a snake how to bring back the rope 
remove the wrong notion. Vimuktascha vimuchyate. You are already liberated. There is a beautiful verse in our our Atma Bodha. Atma tu satatam praptah apraptavad vidyaya tannashe praptavad bhati swakantha bharanam yatha like the necklace so this has gone back and now i am searching for the necklace you know sometimes it goes back it is there but i am not seeing it and i am searching oh searching and finally i find are it is here only in the same way this consciousness also there is saying you know अप्राप्तश्चेत प्राप्तव्यम प्राप्तश्चेत ज्ञातव्यम इफ यू डोंट हैव इट देन यू हैव टू गेन इट यू हैव टू वर्क हार्ड एंड गेट इट बट सपोज यू ऑलरेडी हैव इट एंड स्टिल इफ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग द बेनिफिट ऑफ इट देन दैट मींस दैट मींस यू आर नॉट पेइंग अटेंशन टू व्हाट यू हैव यू आर लूजिंग इट बिकॉज़ यू हैव नॉट पेड अटेंशन प्राप्तश्चेत nyatavyam if you already have it then you have to know it and knowing happens through paying attention vimuktascha vimuchyate aham nirvikalpo निराकारूपो विभुर्व्याप्य सर्वेन्द्रिया सदा मे सम न मुक्तिर्न बंध चिदानंदूप शिवोहम शिवोहम चिदानंदूप शिवोहम शिवो न मुक्ति न बंध वेर इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ लिबरेशन वेन इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस यू आर नेवर बाउंड दिस बॉन्डेज इज ओनली अ रॉन्ग नोशन so therefore what has to be done this wrong notion has to be eliminated so that is the purpose of all meditation and that is the meaning of anushthanam just pay attention the lord is always with us ever ready to reveal but we don't want him we are busy with the world and the god is waiting <laughs> he's poor man he is waiting how long he has been waiting from the infinite past where actually is the problem the problem is not paying attention So what is solution pay attention that is dhyana where is he right here who avakra achetasa avak ajasya avakra chetasa then what happens while living itself vimukta now this is another meaning given by bhagwan shankara acharya hmm? ihaiva while living liberation is not something after death ihaiva avidya krita kama karma bandhanai vimuktah so vimuktah means liberated while living vimuchyate means liberated after dying <laughs> actually it is the same thing so while living he is called jeevan mukta after death he is called videha mukta hmm. bhagwan shankara acharya takes this meaning so while living what are you free from liberation means what freedom freedom from all this you know 
काम कर्म बंधने ही दर्ज अ बॉन्डेज विच यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग वाइल लिविंग वरी टेंशन एंगजाइटी दे आर ऑल एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ दैट बॉन्डेज फ्री फ्रॉम दैट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज मुक्ति फ्री फ्रॉम ईगो फ्री फ्रॉम कर्तृत्व भोक्तृत्व द सेंस ऑफ डुअरशिप फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल काइंड ऑफ सुपीरियोरिटी इंफीरियोरिटी कॉम्प्लेक्स फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल काइंड ऑफ कंपल्शन एडिक्शंस इट्स ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ अविद्या कृत बिकॉज आई डोंट नो हु आई एम आई हैव टेकन माई सेल्फ टू बी द बॉडी Actually, I am consciousness. I don't know. I think I am the body, and thus starts. So all the misery ends when I know myself as I am. This alone has to be the purpose of life. So while living in the world, while performing the duties, family duties, professional duty, all these duties have to be done for what? the higher purpose is purification of mind why purification of mind is necessary only a pure mind can shift its attention to the self to consciousness and once this is done sufferings end vimuktascha vimuchyate while living itself he experiences the benefit of this knowledge he becomes a jeevan mukta liberated while living and when the body dies what happens he becomes videha mukta videha mukta means what no more coming back to birth death cycle why there is no birth death cycle because there is no desire why there is no desire because there is fulfillment why there is fulfillment because the nature of the self is ananda <laughs> when you are already totally fulfilled then there is no desire when there is no desire the seed for rebirth that seed becomes roasted they say <laughs> you know that seed cannot grow you have roasted that seed in the fire of knowledge this is a language used the seed for rebirth is desire There is no desire. There is fulfillment. There is peace. That happiness. You come to know. I don't need a body to be happy. <laughs> you know, this is a very big wrong notion. <laughs> Sometimes they say, Swami Ji, I want to be born because I want to enjoy so many things. <laughs> Somewhere we think that if I want to be happy, I have to have a body. What he said here, Arey. body is just a home you are not your home you are not your mansion you are separate your home is separate or the body can be converted with an instrument you are a totally different entity know yourself as you are gain this knowledge and be free now the next verse talks about how this very same lord who is there as consciousness is there in the whole world also otherwise we may see god here but about the world i don't know <laughs> that's a problem <laughs> he himself has become the world that is the next verse which we will see in the next class om sarve bhavantu sukhinah सर्वे सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कशिदुखभावे असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम